Hi, I'm Thomas Blug and I'm here to show you the Triumph Mark II. Triumph Mark II is already the second uh, generation of Triumphs. Uh, we started Triumph in 1995 with Mark I, obviously, and now we have the Mark II, which is my favorite Houston Kettner amp. And um, the Triumph is divided into three amp sections. We got amp 1, amp 2, amp 3, and each amp section has two channels, like A and B. So, for me, it has the whole history of classic guitar amplifiers in one amplifier head, actually tube amplifier head, 13 tubes, 100 watts, all options. And um, starting with channel um, amp 1A, it's more like a classic American uh, clean sound. Um, obviously, you know, great for clean playing. Okay. On the B mode, um, I have an extra gain control, so I can go from really clean. Okay. It's more like a British clean tone, you know, like a sound that the Beatles would have been using, like... One special switch here, which is the tight switch. The tight switch on M1 is designed to reduce the rumble frequencies. As we all know, a head and a 4x12 is great for rock playing, you know, for heavy stuff, and you want this extra bottom end. But on a clean tone, most people prefer combos, and a combo has a much drier and a much tighter low end. And um, of course you could re reduce the bass from the preamp, but then you would cut all the bass from the preamp section and the sound would get thin. And we know there's a special re uh, resonance frequency about a 4x12 cabinet, so we designed a switch that just cuts off this certain frequency, which is about 96 Hz. And, um, this is um, to get a, a dry and tight bass tone in the, in the more clean, uh, for the more clean sounds without uh, affecting anything else. Um, just for a little demo, I have this here. This is without the switch, now with the tight switch. Uh, the balance between the bass and the top strings is much more even now. So this is why we designed the tight switch. And um, when we go for M2A, that's a classic British rock tone, the one that I like a lot. <laughs> So you can have all the dynamic and you can work with the volume control on the guitar. Um, next here is the Gain B, which is more like a Hendrix style British rock tone. Uh, tone. Uh, you know, the tone when you really crank a vintage amp, it has more balls, so it...
living room volume, okay? So you hear a lot of sustain and a lot of walls. And on M3, we have uh, on the A section a classic British high gain tone with a lot of dynamic. This is what I like the most about it. It has such a wide range of dynamic. So I can start from. then crank it I have tons of gain, a lot of dynamic, and it's also one of my favorites. Coming to 3B, uh, we have the more American style overdrive tone that has more of everything. More balls, more gain, and if you name it, maybe more tone, but I'm more into the British sound. Sometimes I want more, so I go to 3B. <laughs> different channels, six different sounds. As I said, the whole history in classic guitar amps. Besides these channels, we have some features that are kind of handy with a tube amp like this. There's an effects loop. The effects loop, of course, is on the back. Uh, I'm using a little pedal delay here. Um, and I also have the option to switch it on with the stage board. i show you the stage board. This stage board, as you can see, has the six different sounds divided in the, into three M sections and uh, A, B, A, B, A, B and here's your effects loop. Okay. Another option of switching the Triumph Mark II is using the MSM1 MIDI switching module and uh, using a MIDI pedal. Um, with the MIDI you have the option to switch a MIDI effect device and the amp at the same time. So just take a number like you want to have your preset 5 and you recall a chorus on your uh, effect device at the number 5 you want to have maybe your clean sound under the same MIDI number. So what you do is you dial in or you just uh, switch to the clean channel switch on the effects loop you hold MIDI learn and then you send 5 so, the amp or the MSM1 remembers number 5 and uh, the amp remembers all the switching settings on the amplifier. So, you send in number 5, every time the 5 comes in, it will automatically switch to the clean channel and switch on the effects loop. Okay? And with this method you can go and make up to whatever, 128 programs, any combinations you like. Um, the master section here is a, an overall presence control to dial in um, more or less presence depending on the, the cabinet you're using or the room you're playing in. So middle position is kind of more balanced, um, but some people want more bytes, so use the presence clockwise or if you want to have a smoother sound, go anti-clockwise. Here we can see the volume or the master volume which is the overall volume for all the six sounds and at the moment it's very very low since we are on 
uh, kind of a living room volume here. I usually have it by, like, let's say, 9 o'clock uh, for smaller club gigs. Bigger stages, sometimes half. I've never had it anything above that, and uh, there's plenty of power, so don't worry. Um, standby switch, power switch. On the back, I'll show you. First, okay, mains. This is the stage board that uh, connects to the stage board socket, and you can fix it here. And this little red switch is the half power switch, uh, which I usually use on 50 watts, so I have a more vintage or more creamy sound. Um, I personally prefer to drive the power amp a bit harder and reduce the power amp section, switching off two of those EL34s um, from 100 to 50 watts. Um, on big stages, sometimes I use the 100 watt as well. Other people want a harder, a more stiffer tone. Of course, you go to 100 watts and there's your punch. Um, this section here is something very special about Triumph. Um, it's a, a preamp out power amp in. And we actually designed this loop for using a volume control. And this is kind of like the master volume control. Um, and it's a special buffer amp that has almost no influence or no influence to the tone where you can use a volume control as a master control, master volume, and you can use very long leads. And this is something very unique for a tube amp. Usually with a tube amp you would not find this kind of feature unless you would uh, have a, a different sound. So we are kind of proud to have this option here for an overall master volume control with a volume pedal. This is the effect loop section and um, we see a level control here, so this just adjusts the amount of effects you want to hear. Um, this is effect return, effect send. A little knob here to decide if you use a little pedal effect, you go to minus 10, or if you have a big rack mount studio effect that can handle plus 4 dB, you have it in the other direction. And here is another switch, it's the serial parallel switch that switches the effect loop in two modes. In serial mode, um, all the signal goes through the effect unit. So comes in the M, goes out to the effect unit, and 100% of the signal has to pass through the effect. Um, that's u useful for certain effects like compressor, because you want to affect all the dynamic or a special EQ for instance, but most other effects you want to keep the punch and you have the parallel mode where the dry signal always stays in the amp and the effect signal is just mixed on top of that si uh, dry signal. So I have my echo um, on top of the dry signal in the amp and this gives you a much, yeah, a much tighter and a much more wider sound in a, it has simply more punch and it's more natural. And by the way, this switch is also MIDI switchable. So this is one of those switches that will be memorized with the MSM1. That's a very clever feature. So if you think about a big MIDI setup and the big switching with the Triumph Mark II, that's a, a switch that gives you options you would not see on other amps. And by the way, this is the, the plate um, that you would take off and install the MSM1 MIDI switching module if you would like to use one. Um, here is the red box, the iOut. Um, red box is a speaker simulation that Hughes and Kettner is doing for so many years, one of their most uh, well-known products. And here is kind of like a, a microphone XLR jack out to the PA and you get a nice uh, frequency treated signal uh, sounds like a guitar, like a speaker. Actually, a microphone sometimes sounds a bit better, but in most conditions, small clubs, a microphone is not uh, the right thing to work with. You have feedbacks, and you know it's it's taking too much space. And I prefer a mixture of both. I use this on a, in a small club into the PA, so the guy has something on the board that is consistent and tight. And of course, I like to play at my nice volume, and it blends absolutely fine. Um, 
or maybe for recording, so you have these options if you uh, use if you don't want to use a microphone. Um, the speaker out section here gives you the I would say traditional output 16 ohms, uh, 2 times 8 ohms, and 4 ohm output. So depending on the cabinet, um, you just choose the output you would like. Thanks. Check out the Triumph Mark II.